Hey, how's it going guys? Uh, welcome back into the boat shop. Uh, we're going to uh, play with some upside down boats a little bit today. I have had uh, a number of you have asked some uh, uh, interesting questions. I appreciate that um, and thank you for those of you who subscribe. It helps get the uh, these videos out to more people. YouTube shows it more if you do subscribe and if you like the videos, don't forget you can do that. You know, push the button and like the video and then more guys will be able to see some of these things. And uh, hopefully we, we can all learn a thing or two. I say all because uh, I get a lot of really great suggestions too and I, uh, I'm very thankful for that. It's a lot of fun uh, trying to figure out how to make these things go fast. Um, ran this past weekend. Uh, the eliminator of this boat over here was a was a ballistic rocket, as it always is, and, and had some great fun. The Stro, which this one is, uh, uh, of course, you don't get to see the top sides today, but um, this one uh, I'm still having limited success with. Uh, I believe I've discovered the reasons why, and that's why you see some really funky looking pieces here. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, first thing, I said I had some questions. Um, I've had, uh, this This goes uh, specifically to a friend down in Florida, um, uh, asking about skid fin alignment, uh, how I align the fin, uh, where are you going to put it, how do you know when it's right, uh, do you just sit back and kind of put your thumb up and eyeball it? Or do you have a real uh, a spot, a place you want to put it, and how do you know? Uh, I give myself, as you can see, uh, a lot of options. Uh, really kind of silly, you know. I use maybe three of those holes uh, when I'm farting around with a new boat till I get it where I want it, and I'm still toying with this one a little bit. Uh, but it really does handle well. Uh, problem uh, is I race out here at what's called RC Unlimited's uh, club here in... Uh, the Northwest, uh, primarily in Washington State. Uh, here, we have many, many boats that show up to race, and if you want to win, you got to not only go ballistic fast, but you got to go ridiculous slow. Uh, to win here, you better be in the first couple of lanes. Uh, there are a, a few exceptions to that. There's a couple guys that are much, much better drivers than me that can come flying on the outside and uh, and win. Uh, from the outside, but when you're a lousy driver, you want lane one, two, three, uh, nothing worse than that. So you got to be able to crawl and then pop back up. Uh, this boat doesn't want to do that. Uh, as you can probably see, it's unusual in its design. Uh, I know, right? Weird. Uh, this is an ML Boatworks thing. If you buy a kit from ML Boatworks, you'll see uh, on their extreme kits, you'll see this flat bottom. Uh, the idea is kind of a ground effects. A ground effects does exist over water, but it's really weird. Uh, it's not much of a static surface, uh, so it moves all the time. Uh, but it works well when it works. Uh, it works well on the Eliminator. I run the Eliminator this way. Uh, this boat, I experimented. None of my boats are ever the same. I do some crazy things. And what I would call the, uh, the ride height on this boat, that would be the uh, height if you place a straight edge across the uh, the ride pads and measure to your ride surface, which is easy on this one because it's flat all the way out, that's your ride height. And you can go shallow or deep, whatever you want to do, angles or no angles, uh, drastic angle of attack or none, big step, little step, uh, no step with a taper, all kinds of different ways to do it. This boat, I had built it with uh, a very, very shallow ride height. I'm not going to give you numbers. You figure that stuff out on your own. Uh, it doesn't work, so I should tell you the number. Uh, and uh, when I would go slow, the boat, as you might imagine, would sink too deep in the front, and it would stick on the water, and you're done. It doesn't want to accelerate again. In fact, it would kill it uh, at times. Uh, so this last race, I built some pieces, brought them with me, uh, where I deepen the steps, slightly deepen the pads, widen the pads, and I did this in increments. I put these on first, and uh, the boat was improved, just mildly improved. Then I widened the pads and deepened them with these two pieces, and presto, the boat worked. Uh, not perfectly, not fantastic, not a race boat go win yet, but it's a step in the right direction for certain. So, that is why uh, you see this tool here because, uh, yep, brand new boat, only been out a couple times, but you got to do what you got to do. All this is coming off, 
and it's all going to get rebuilt. I have plans. Okay, I got this. Don't worry about it. All right, today, specifically, skid fin alignment. How do you do it? What are you going to do? I see guys do this all the time. They grab their straight edge, they put it on here, and they go, well, that's pretty good. And, uh, well, the critical thing is where are you going to angle the straight edge? Because you have angle in the fin, put the straight edge on one way, and it angles way in. Put it on the other way, it angles way out. Okay, where's right? All right, here's how I do it. Every boat's different, by the way. Don't set it the way I set it. You can use this technique because it works pretty good, but don't use my setting because that might not work for you. What I do, though, is you're gonna measure to the center line of your strut, okay? My numbers don't matter, all right? You're looking for the center line of your strut, okay? Because that's about where the prop rides, more or less in the center line of the hub. Boy, it ain't a static thing. This thing is up and down and going crazy. But you want to be in that ballpark. And what we're going to do is we're going to stack material out here to the height of the center line of the strut, right? Okay, so this now approximates the, uh, the propeller, the center hub of the propeller. Now we're taking our other straight edge. We're going to lay it on the ride pad and we're laying it on our little piece. And we're gonna pull it into place square against the inside of the fin. Y'all see that? Okay, we're square up on there. Now I've got this straight edge at the height of the center line of the strut on the ride pad in the front. This straight edge is the line of my fin, the alignment of the fin. You may be able to tell if I just step back here and look. Difficult to tell in the uh, image here as I'm looking at it. But what you can do is measure using the right end from underneath. I'm not really straight on it here in this, but it's about an inch and a half. I can come back here, and we're about an inch and three eighths. If you don't believe me, or want to get a little closer, you can, you know, put a little square here on it and measure right up to it and get it real precisely. Another way it's easy to check if you use uh, straight ride pads, you can simply measure. To the edge of the ride pad. It's about an inch and a half there and about an inch and five eighths here. Uh, so I use what I call toe out. That is where the front of the fin is out away from the center line of the boat. Okay, back in slightly, front out slightly. That's a dramatic uh, look at it. But So I towed my fin out just a little bit. Why? Well, because it's what works. Uh, but beyond that, it works in my head as well as it works on the boat. I use, a, I use a single bevel fin. I cut it on one side only. I do these myself. There's no bevel on the inside. I want the inside flat so that the whole inside surface is holding water. I don't want an angle in there because this surface is what gets highly loaded in the turn. So I want this thing cutting water, not parting it. I want it lifting the water and holding the boat in the water. Uh, so the idea behind why it works in my head is I have a cut here, and if I ran this dead straight in the water, I'm gonna have water pressure on this side of the fin, right here. So I tow it out just ever so slightly, basically to try to fool the water into thinking that it's a fin with, with two bevels, if you know what I mean. Uh, this fin would like to track straight, towed out ever so slightly. Plus, it helps it bite into the turn because I'm already predisposed into biting into the corner. And at the end of the day, these things need to corner really, really fast. It's one thing to have lots of straightaway speed and then you shut the boat down and you hang on to it while it hops and pops and bucks and snorts through the turn. That doesn't do you any good when you're racing the 25 other boats that can win. Uh, the thing has to corner and it has to corner blistering fast and it just works. If you tow this guy out a little bit, use a single bevel, uh, works fantastic. 
Okay, so I hope that answers your question uh, on the gentleman that asked. Uh, maybe it makes sense to you, maybe it doesn't. I don't care, but this is a way you can check it. If you like your fin towed in towards the center line, fine. But this gives you a way to check it and come right back to that setting every time. Okay, so I think that's just all we're really going to talk about right now. Uh, I'm going to grab that Dremel. Uh, I wanted to shoot this video before this thing became a carved up mess. And uh, uh, we're going to go to town. And maybe we'll even, uh, we'll even look at it and see uh, uh, how it looks when we get all this cut apart and build some new stuff on here. Okay. I might not talk to you about the exact angles and all that that I use because I want to help, but I, I don't want to build your boat. Go build your own. Stop watching videos. You're wasting your time. Thanks for being here. Click like and uh, join the club. See you guys.